To implement tissue regeneration procedures, we have to take several steps. My research starts from getting extracted third molars from the dental surgery clinic. I take these teeth, disinfect them, and then start isolating dental tissue. After that, I start culturing these cells, put them in the incubator. So usually it takes uh, about a week. And then after that, I get really tremendous amount of stem cells. They start growing, growing, proliferating. Whatever media that you grow the cells in, they can differentiate into whatever cells you want. I take these cells and isolate them in a scaffold. The scaffold is basically like a sponge. Then I take the scaffold into a tooth model. So after preparing the canal, we plug the other end. So one end is closed and the other end is open for the blood supply from the mouse. We utilize the mice as an in vivo, in vivo meaning the inside the tissue, this kind of environment to provide blood supply. In our purpose is to generate a tissue we call dentin. After putting the root fragments with the scaffolds in the mice for three months, we take them out and we start decalcifying them in the decalcifying solution until they feel like a cucumber, so it's easier to cut them and have slides. We start sectioning the tooth to view them under the microscope. We're supposed to see newly regenerated tissue. And if we find that, then that means that the uh, process was successful. There are many benefits that can come out of this uh, new invention. One, the root canals we do is, in a sense, quite invasive. A lot of time, even just partial infection, we have to remove the entire pulp tissue. If we can, in the future, to regenerate that small part of the tooth structure that are lost, we can avoid all these traumatic and invasive procedures. So that's just for the dental part of the benefit. We can actually turn dental stem cells into neural cells. And bone tissue, there's a potential that the dental stem cell can be utilized to cure certain diseases, for example, Parkinson's disease.